Good evening. Welcome to Hardfire. Tonight, we bring you part two of our three-part debate on 9-11 conspiracy theories. My guests are Professor James Fetzer, recently retired uh, after 19 years of service at the University of Minnesota. This is his newest book, The 9-11 Conspiracy, The Scamming of America, available Amazon, various book outlets. And uh, Professor Fetzer's opponent is Mark Roberts, debunker extraordinaire. We're going to try to pick up where we left off. Uh, we're all wearing the same clothes all week because we, <laughs> we just got so excited. I've been known to do that. <laughs> yes. I mean, we didn't bathe. We barely ate. We did drink a lot of tequila, so it should be a good show. Uh, I want to talk a little about Osama bin Laden. Uh, apparently, you don't think he's done anything wrong here, and he's getting a bad rep. Why do you feel that way? Well, not only has the FBI acknowledged that it has no, no hard evidence, but it appears that the initial reports that he had acknowledged having been involved are false. In fact, his original response was that he had nothing to do with 9-11, that it was a violation of the tenets of Islam to murder innocent women and children, and he thought that this was a, a bad thing. You can, you can find in the book you mentioned there, by the way, in the appendices, some press releases from scholars enumerating our reasons for holding that position, but they include the expert opinion uh, of uh, Professor Lawrence from Duke University, who's the leading expert on Osama bin Laden in the world today. Yeah, now Professor Lawrence uh, did not return my calls or my emails, although Ed Haas of the Muckraker Report did uh, publish on his site an analysis of the so-called Osama confession video, and he determined that it's real. Uh, Mark knows a lot more about this than I do, so why don't you tell us a bit? Uh, I'm, I'm no expert in video analysis. Uh, but I have looked through the video frame by frame, basically. What conspiracists will do is, and it's a very, it's a, it's a poor uh, video. It's not, uh, not great quality. Um, what conspiracists will do will, is take the very worst frame out of that video and say, this, this very poorly lighted frame doesn't look like uh, Osama bin Laden. He looks like he's too fat, um, looks like his nose is too short, but watch the rest of the video. He's in it for about half an hour, uh, and it is indeed him throughout the video. He's also made several other videos that are clear as day, Osama bin Laden, even in sort of a studio setting, one in October of 2004, where he says, absolutely, and in and, and America, you better watch out, because we're going to keep doing it unless you start behaving yourselves. Uh, was he the mastermind? I don't know. I think Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who's in custody right now, probably takes some more credit for that. Uh, but he's certainly uh, an inspiration to the people who mm -hmm. attacked us on 9-11, uh, certainly had the capability to do some funding or to arrange some funding, um, and uh, and certainly met with uh, the terrorists, uh, some of the terrorists who were involved. We have videos of that. Um, uh, so to say that he's not involved at all, I don't take his word for it when he's on the run when we're trying to drop bombs on his head that he didn't do it. I would say the same thing if people were trying to drop bombs on my head. Since then, repeatedly, he said, yes, Al-Qaeda did it, and I was involved, repeatedly. Uh. I don't happen to accept any of that, and for Mark to suggest we're the conspiracists when he endorses the government's theory that 19 Islamic fundamentalists hijacked these planes is rather odd. We are critics of the government's conspiracy theory, not proponents of it, as is he. Moreover, there's a difference the, between the, criticizing something that has evidence and criticizing Khalid something that has Sheikh no evidence. Mohammed confessed to some 31 different offenses, including an attempted assassination on Jimmy Carter when he would have been 12 or 13 years old, Let's and, that and, 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 and an attack is on a, a, is an on a bank. An attack on a bank that w occurred after he was already incarcerated. This is one way an individual who is confessing under coercion makes it manifest to a public sophisticated enough to read between the lines that what he's saying is bunk. Okay, now this is an important point here because I'd like, just as an exercise, let's pretend that you're right and Osama bin Laden is uh, whatever you want to call him, a CIA asset, uh, a bogeyman who doesn't exist, someone who did exist and is now dead. Let's suppose there is no Osama bin Laden, because that would explain why, when these videos come out where he announces his complicity in the attacks, it would explain why he doesn't immediately surface and deny it. 
Uh, I mean, there is a reason, obviously, Al Jazeera would be happy to air a real Osama video where he says, no, no, wait a minute, they're making this up. I had nothing to do with it. These videos don't exist. So we have to assume that Osama is under the control of the conspiracy in our government, that he, he can be used by them for whatever purpose they choose. Why didn't they kill him, that is to say, announce his death, before the last election? They're faced with a crushing defeat that's going to strip them of most of their power, and they decide not to announce that they've killed Osama. Now, this is extraordinary. I mean, this is breathtaking. They have a rabbit that they can pull out of a hat, and they opt not to do it. Yeah, he would have been a lot more valuable to them dead than he would yeah, be to I, any I mean, conspiracy is, theory Is alive. this any way to run a new world order? Oh, I, 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 I don't know, Ron. I, 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 I can't r read the minds of so those who are pulling Osama some conundrum. of these strings. But if remember, Osama, asset, why Osama bin Laden was a creation of our own intelligence agencies well, when wasn't. we supported the untrue. efforts of this uh, Afghan group no, to get the Russians out of What do you base that on? To base them out of Afghanistan. What do you base that on? And in addition to uh, the, Mujer, Ed, the Ed Haas report, by the way, is very curious to me because he asked the government to certify the authenticity of the bin Laden confession tape, and the government refused to do yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to pretend that the tape is a fake and that bin Laden can be used by the conspiracy any way they like. If we, if we can, I can just interrupt for a second. Yeah. We are just talking about one tape of yes. several. The others are quite clear. Yeah. But w why wouldn't they announce that, hey, we got them? At long, I know you people have been saying that we can't do anything right and uh, we've let this just guy go. We got him. Just to why didn't they do it? Wh why did, why As did the last they, chance. I mean, Bush is retiring to wh his why ranch. Did, why didn't, why didn't no. they announce when, uh, when they got uh, Saddam? I, uh, they did. I, last week I had uh, the mother of a B-1 bomber pilot who was flying outside of Baghdad when he got very specific coordinates. He, he, he hit his target when he returned to base. He was celebrated, lionized, he awarded the Distinguished Flying mm -hmm. Cross, put on television for having killed Saddam. Uh, within a few days, however, he was flown back to Langley for a super secret meeting that they had discovered that the assassination of a foreign leader was a violation of executive orders signed by three different presidents. How do you and they know had about that now, meeting if it was super secret? Now, yeah, I was because wondering. he, he, How do we know he this? told his mother about his meeting in Langley <laughs> and he was crushed. His attitude was completely different. You have but, to look so, at the evidence, wait, so, Mark. So, so the one Saddam, who prides himself so Saddam, on being so vastly knowledgeable, so Saddam, I'm giving you new evidence. I, I'm a little confused. Did they sense. hang Saddam uh, or not? It appears to have been one of his doubles. Ah. Which is hardly the first time that mean. observation has been made. So for, well, it is. Well, it's Saddam, I've heard it. But so who does it, who, to whom does that appear? Joel, he went through a whole trial. An Australian independent journalist had observed there were differences in the dentures and the jaw of the real Saddam versus the captured Saddam. And no and one I, else and I, independent, I independently verified that using a photograph that the government itself had provided. And he was right on both counts. Saddam had well, immaculate teeth. You were criticizing teeth. my expertise um, in photo um, analysis. Um, um, so what's yours? Saddam had immaculate it's very simple to see whether somebody has irregular teeth versus immaculate teeth and whether they have an overbite or an underbite. I even published an article entitled, When is Saddam Not Saddam, that you can find on assassinationscience.com. So the okay. new Saddam had better teeth? Is that, was that no, it? Saddam himself had great teeth. It was so they this, spent this all this time and money Saddam had bad teeth. Can you, can you imagine a man who rules a country and has uh, you know, dozens of palaces subjecting himself to climb into a dirt hole, a so-called spider hole? Can you well, imagine Saddam Hussein would actually... Did. Well, you his, say his apparently, sons, I think that's completely come, inconsistent his sons didn't with his exactly demeanor. come to a great end either. But they, they considered that to be an well, they all, death problem. Well, the pilot, the, pilot, the pilot took them all out. We, he killed his sons and on Saddam on the same here. occasion. Uh, the question is... This caused great embarrassment, by the way, Ron, because the mission accomplished was actually supposed to be to announce the decapitation of the government by killing Saddam and his sons. Yeah. But they couldn't do it, having now belatedly discovered they violated so, executive but order. So are but you announcing this super secret uh, uh, thing that happened? I had, I, I had the... There's a mother on my show last week, and she laid it all out in spades. She'd done a lot of research, and I had but again, uh, looked at corroborating documents. So we'll take his mother's word for why it. Why would the Bush crime family, faced with the loss of much of their power, 
not simply announce that, hey, we got Osama bin Laden. And the Democrats, oh my God, uh, we've Which, been anticipating this. It was this a the major issue in the election. The war yeah. was raging, well, and people yeah. were, it were not going well, and people were saying this was totally misdirected. We should have been going after yeah. Saddam because or, or they Osama. Want, they Osama want him the to continue time. to motivate fear in the American people. Well, we still have to worry about no, Osama. The, you, know, you know, I mean, if, this, we, if we kill Osama, the, the, and, the, and the, we the kill game is over. Bush is going back to his ranch. I mean, the war on terror is over for as far as Bush is concerned. He's going home. Uh, are, are, are we saying that the vast conspiracy constructed this fascist state to turn it over to Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama? Yeah. Uh, my, my preference Let's not is stay to, in power. My preference is to trade in harder evidence than these political speculations. For example, well, so, uh, none of the names of any of the alleged hijackers appear on any of the passenger manifests. Would you well, like to see we them? We have, have no have evidence. For I, I, I have all the original manifest. None of them were on the original yes, release manifest. Mark. Enough. They the were added Globe. later. No, they were Jim, not. you're making Listen, a specific There claim. are no tickets that show no, that the they Boston were. No, the Boston Globe published the seating positions of the hijackers, and they got them from manifests that were supplied to them. And, and they here had they them. are. The, the, yeah. In fact, the airlines have been very scared about every single one of them. A, this is a late development. Is on the manifest. In order of substitution of evidence. I have the no. originals, which I did not bring Look, with me. Talk to the FBI. I will be glad you, to provide it. Every single one of them. That guess who are guess who's not on here, Jim? Some of the passengers who arrived late, some of the passengers who were flying on their uh, relatives' passes. Given enough time, right? you can make up all the evidence okay. you want. But so all of the hijackers are. What is the story? Not a single media outlet in the world would take the biggest story of the century and run with it. Their many, names, their many, names weren't there in the beginning. Many Ron. of them they in were not there were not on the initial very friendly to every, the initial every, every one of wasn't the even an Arabic name every on the one of the manifest. newspapers who reported I just showed you the, these guys, I just showed you the initial manifest. Say that you're wrong. Right. Those, those are to be the initial those manifest. Are from, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my sources. I'll email them to you. That's that's fine. They're from the airlines. None of they're these not, guys. It's, they're not what was printed. None of these guys had the ability to fly these aircraft. The Boston Globe said they weren't They weren't licensed pilots. They weren't licensed. He wasn't a licensed. Commercial it is true. Jim, Hani Hanjour was his not a licensed commercial instrument rated pilot? The, the his instructor he said he couldn't, he couldn't fly yes at no. all. He yes was astonished. No. Did he also not rent planes for long practice flights? Let's talk about Did he, Yes or no? Let's talk about Yes or no? Uh, was he a commercial instrument rated pilot? Did he rent private if, planes? If, if the question is, did he have a piece of paper? He might have, but he was not qualified to fly instrument on a plane. There's no question about it. Well, Gino well he, Bernacchi, got that, he got that license aware? in the United States. Gino Bernacchi, an Italian pilot and flight instructor, wrote a paper that's available on, well, various, uh, various sites, uh, 911myths.com, investigations more. The paper is entitled, What Another Expert? And Bernacchi disposes of these claims that uh, the hijackers were not qualified to do what they did, that uh, simulators couldn't provide the kind of training they needed, that uh, some of the maneuvers they executed defied physical laws. He says, this is, this is just rubbish. This is Absolutely. There's another 747 we're, we're, we're pilot. Chief, Matt, the I fact mean, that an article has been Jim, published Matt. doesn't make it true. Well, you have to show say. where the man is wrong. He's a pilot and a flight instructor. Well, we have an expert's pilots another. and aeronautical engineers who are members of the society. There's, there's an organization. The pilots you'll you'll both truth. love this. Pilots for Truth. Pilots for 9-11 Truth is they obtained can't, data they under can't the Freedom of Information Act from the black box the government claims was on Flight 77. They have analyzed that data in relation to the government's alleged account of what happened. According to the government, the plane came in on a southerly trajectory and hit the building at an angle. According to the black box data, it came on in a more northerly trajectory and headed directly perpendicular toward Absolutely the building. False. I had, the, I had the co-founder on my Absolute. show just last week. We were going over this in Who spades. You can go on Pandora's box. Uh, the uh, yeah, the opening aware, Pandora's box is a video websites. which shows the... We're all aware of the website. No, this is a... Let me tell you a, what they found. Let, let me explain. Let me complete what I'm saying here. Sure. Because okay. I had this fellow as my guest on my most recent What's program on Thursday. What's his name? Because Pilots for Bal Truth... Bal Rob Balsamo. Balsamo. Yeah. Right, Rob Balsamo. They don't return they discovered, they discovered that the plane in altitude was at about 300 feet in relation to the lamppost and could not have hit them. And by the time it gets within a second of the approach to the Pentagon, it's still at 100 feet. The Pentagon is only 77 feet high. That means this plane, if there was such a plane, flew over the Pentagon. It did not hit the Pentagon. Well, and this is a, 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 a group of expert pilots who are doing very good work. Great. Can I address that? Yes. 
Um, they're taking this data from the flight data recorder that was re recovered in the Pentagon. So to make a claim that the plane didn't hit the Pentagon based on that data is a little bit silly. You could say, okay, the government faked the data. Well, why would they fake data showing that the plane didn't hit the Pentagon? The plane didn't hit now, the Pentagon. Let, 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 me, let me finish, Jim. There's let me three other Jim. lines of argument. Are you going to keep interrupting? Because it's yes. going to be a long show. Yes, I know, and it is going to be a long show, Mark. Go ahead. Actually, it'll be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make your point. I, I will make my point if you'll let me. Uh, we were talking about Bill O'Reilly before the show, interrupting. Let's not Fair do that. Uh, the, uh, yes, uh, why would the government fake data that showed that the plane didn't hit the Pentagon? Now, let's look at this. Uh, the, the passengers, all the passengers' remains except one were recovered, positively identified in the Pentagon. I've got a list that I'll give you. With 99 witnesses who saw the plane hit the Pentagon, all remains of the plane were recovered at the Pentagon. Uh, if I get on my bathroom scale, my electronic scale, and it says I weigh one pound, does that mean I really weigh one pound, or could there be an instrument error there? there could three, there be an error in the measurement? There are three. When, when, when the plane did hit the Pentagon, and it did because hundreds of people were there and saw it, and say it was an American Airlines plane. And I'll, I'll read, so, you're shaking your head. I'll read Mark, the Mark, it didn't now. happen. I don't care how many you line up. I was a, as a, com as a former commissioned officer, I used to be responsible for 300 recruits and 15 DIs going through recruit training. And that's relevant how? It would have been easy to have 300 of them swear on their mother's grave that they saw, they saw Bruce Wayne drive the Batmobile. But the these Pentagon. weren't recruits. No, these were people these in weren't all recruits. Harry Kutowski, who was a lieutenant colonel stationed at the Pentagon, said they never felt an impact on the building. They saw and where a was fireball. She? And where was she? She was stationed in the Pentagon. No, where She in walked Pentagon? outside. Where in the Pentagon? And she looked at the uh, the alleged location, and she could see no debris from any Pentagon. What from happened any, to the from any people plane. on Flight 77? I have no idea, but they weren't they weren't there at the Pentagon. They were I'll all positively that. identified. Many of they them. They may have gone down. You know, that plane, that plane went analysis. off the radar screen in the Kentucky Ohio border and is not on the radar all the way back, where there appears to have been a substitution made of another plane. Ah, now that's important. So, in other words, the conspiracists who pretend that uh, Cheney was talking about a plane coming in. 10 miles out, 20 miles, 30, 50, they are lying because there was no plane being tracked. Well, I said so there was, was a yes, substitution We've established plane. that. There was a, no plane coming It wasn't coming Flight in. 77. It was a different aircraft. Well, where did okay. the people go? Let, let, me, let me just read off some of these Well, they may quotes. have been in the Kentucky-Ohio border, Ron. I mean, okay. I said that's where the plane went off of the, of the, the, of the, of the, of the published reports, these are uh, public reports, interviews of all different people. These aren't people who came to the, to the press and said, I have a story to tell. The press came to them. Uh, these are just ones that casually I recorded. 99 saw the plane, physically saw the plane hit the Pentagon. Six were nearly hit by the plane in front of the Pentagon. We'll get to Frank Probst's story in a second. Several others were within 100 feet of the impact. 25 specifically said it was an American Airlines jet. Six said it was a Boeing 757. Six were pilots. One was an air traffic controller. 10 said the plane's Mark. flaps and landing gear were deployed. 16 saw the plane's light poles. 37 mentioned aircraft Mark. debris. 15 mentioned smelling or contacting aviation fuel. Zero saw an aircraft or missile strike the, uh, the Pentagon. Zero saw a plane narrowly miss the Pentagon and fly away. Here's Mark, U.S. Army Mark have Williams. Seen things that didn't happen. It cannot have happened. When Williams, no when Williams discovered the scorched bodies of several airline passengers, they were still strapped into their seats. The stench of charred flesh overwhelmed him. That's a nice story. It was the it's worst thing. Fantasy. No, it's not. It's a horrible story. And That's it happened, a fantasy. And Jim, it happened to real people. It's nice for you to present it, but that doesn't make it Frank true. Frank Probst it, it was working on the Pentagon listen, reconstruction. Listen, listen. listen. Okay. Yeah, Probst, yeah, let him speak. Even the fire chief, who was the first on the scene, had to admit when the reporters questioned him, he had found no debris from an aircraft, no signs of an aircraft at the scene. You're talking about the Alan Wallace. Point, the hit point was on the ground floor, Ron. It was only 10 feet high and about 16 or 17 feet wide. It's surrounded by fence, a couple automobiles, unbroken windows. There is no massive pile of debris from the fuselage of a 100-ton airliner. There are no broken wings from a plane with 125-foot wings. Who, 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 they, they, never, they never recovered the engines. There were no bodies, of seats, or luggage present. The tail wasn't even there. So That's Mark, the first line Sergeant of Mark Williams is a liar. Alan Wallace, the fire I'm not going to characterize him. I'm telling you, there was no plane, well, no yeah, Boeing 777. It's, it's, it's important here's what, here's what Alan to Wallace determine said. how many people two. have to be lying for this conspiracy to be taken seriously. No, 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 no. How let many me, people let, let's have conclude, to be Let lying. me conclude a couple more lines of proof that demonstrate okay. that no Boeing 757 hit the building. That Please was do. the first. Okay. okay. 
The second is the purported trajectory of the plane just barely skimming across the ground and hitting on the ground floor, okay? Yeah. If it actually was just skimming across the ground and hitting on the ground floor, then almost certainly the engines would be plowing furrows in the ground. There's a tremendous blast from the engines, but it turns out that this trajectory is not even aerodynamically possible. Well, a plane in the air at high speed accumulates a pocket of compressed gas <clears> beneath a fuselage, even a Cessna. So a plane can't throttle. crash. Let me, uh, Bernanke it slows has down. Said, Bernanke has said uh, that. Or it comes bump. in at an angle. Read no, aer read the aeronautical Jim. engineer confirms this in pilots. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Read, absolutely not. Not. read well, Aerospace me, Web. Read Aerospace Mark, Web. Mark, I was very com. kind to let you finish your point. And you went on and on with a long list of what I presume okay. is fabricated evidence. Let me offer the what I take to be genuine evidence. That's my opinion. The witnesses That is my opinion that this evidence is not You named the firefighter, Alan Wallace. He says that he saw the plane hit the building. Sit tight. Here's the second line of, that the a Boeing 757 going 500 miles an hour couldn't get closer than 60 feet to the ground. It's aerodynamically impossible. No, it's so from not. An can't crash. A plane can't crash. If it's it comes not. down at an angle, this is flying on a horizontal. Well, on a horizontal. This is flying on a horizontal it had to, it had to 500 miles. It hit the light That's the official trajectory feet. mark. It hit the light poles at 40 you. feet. It hit the, it hit the, the third, Pentagon at the, the ground a level. A third line of proof is that the government has released five frames initially and subsequently three video frames, I mean three videos out of some 84, but only one of them shows anything that might resemble mm -hmm. a plane where you can see a, a tail above a gate mechanism. Now, if you scale a Boeing 757 to that tail, it's much larger than what is visible present. The plane is, after all, 155 feet long in relation to the Pentagon, only 77 feet high. It's more than twice as long as the Pentagon is high. If the plane had been present, it would have been visible. It is not visible. And how many frames per second was that wide-angle lens? These were LTC-1261 Philips cameras, yes. and they were set at such a slow shutter speed one that they couldn't per... possibly pick up an object moving 750 yeah, one, one feet per second. One frame per second. second. It, it can yeah. pick it up, but it, it ends up going to say blur. A fisheye lens also. He, he, a fish eye lens. No less uh, uh, worthy than Bill O'Reilly when he played one of these tapes on the factor had to admit that he couldn't see any plane. It's impossible Jim, to see photographs a photographs of aircraft debris at the Pentagon. Okay. How could you possibly see it? Was this all faked? It's this a lot happened, of, yeah. A this lot, happened was right, faked. This yes. happened all of it. Most of it. Huge pieces of aircraft debris. I believe a plane hit people, the Pentagon. There, it wasn't there the 757. Of, there are hundreds, a there are hundreds of people mm -hmm. right in front of the Pentagon who saw the 757 hit. Well, I think that's a false claim Here's all by itself. Here's what happened to them. Here's where the, the location of the decedents. There are other witnesses the who report died. having seen the plane fly over the building. But what's important Here's is Here's where now each the of the pilots, people died. Mark, the pilots who actually analyzed the black box data from, obtained from the government under the Freedom of Information Act determined that the plane was actually 300 feet too high in the air to have brought uh, taken out the lamppost, and it was still 100 feet in the air when it approached the Pentagon. It flew over the Pentagon as someone at the same time, I believe, as a second plane approached the Pentagon and fired a missile into the building before that plane impacted mm -hmm. with the well, who saw that out. happen? Uh, you well, had the plume you, of the missile in the a, one frame. You had a disastrous experience debating this with J.R. Dunn on the American Thinker. Uh, that, that's a judgment you're rendering, well, okay. which is not which I agree. Agree. justified. Which I agree uh, with. Go to AmericanThinker.com and use the archives, type in J.R. Dunn, D-U-N-N. You can read the it, debates between Jim It's Fetzer right on Scholars. Yeah. I put it right on yeah. 9-11 Scholars. Who, who, which you. ones of the witnesses did you speak to? Who did you speak to on the scene? Who did you speak to who, did, who collected the debris? Look, who? There, there is objective physical who? evidence that a plane didn't hit the building. Who, I haven't been surveying who the did witnesses. You speak That's to, not my primary task. Who did task. you speak to who was there? Karen Katowski has lots She was of, in the building. Chapter. Right, and she came out and took a look, and there was no plane there. Others How came close right was out she? the alleged impact. Hole. Guess what? She says that the, the plane did hit the building. No, she doesn't. Yes, not. she absolutely does. Read her chapter I'll, in 9 I'll 11 and the American I'll Empire. That's anything. Mark, I'm sorry. Read her chapter here's 9 where, 11 and the American Empire. Here's where the people died. Debunking 9 11 myths by popular mechanics. Here is a picture of part of the fuselage of Flight 77 on the lawn of the Pentagon. I love that because it shows no evidence of any fire. It was photographed from se in several different locations as though they were in enhancing here? the amount of evidence by moving it around. What's that is that is a prop, Ron. What's burning behind sorry to say. Yeah. Yeah. Again, how many people do, do you, are aware of this? Have you studied that the black smoke billowing in front of the Pentagon came from a series of dumpsters? Do you realize that? It was a special effect. No, no, sir. No, most, of it came from, most of it came from the diesel fuel generator. Yeah. Look, I would show you. I have the slides that generator. prove it. And a fellow came through Duluth well, with 44 more, plus, and you can see light between the dumpsters and the building. Plus, they had there was, to have the black there was a hundred yards worth of jet fuel. Once, once again, on how many people, when they came how out many on the people are lying just about the Pentagon? 
Good question. In terms of fabricated evidence? Yeah. How many, I don't know how many of those and, people and even exist. And witnesses. Well, how, how, many many people, exist? how many people are lying about this? Ron, we'd have to determine the facts of the matter and compare what well, is well, attributed to I, them I mean, with whether or not they even you, exist. We've got, we've got dozens of pieces of, people, of debris. We've got people who saw the plane hit these light poles and knock them look, over. Look here. So okay. that's all faked. Let me, let all me, point, let me make a, a, a and all the witnesses are lying. elementary point. They're all lying. Here is the lawn. Perfectly clear, green, unscathed. This is immediately after and the And where impact. is the debris? Why, to the left. why should we? No, no, the plane came in. The debris. The, the plane the hit came point in was from, right here. No, sir. This the is the original hit point. Okay, from, let's not talk all at once yet. The plane came in from where, the right where, side of the picture. Get this, Which way did the how debris can we show this? Which way did the well, debris go? Get a close up on this. We've had the time. You know how to do it. I don't. That one there at the top left. You're going to have a tough time seeing this, but Jim's book does show the Pentagon lawn here. What and uh, what, and perfectly what, clear and what that shows, no debris. the plane As came in. As time passed by, they were bringing out debris and scattering this stuff well, around. Sure. It was a stage. Look here, Ron. It's a stage? I okay. just point out. I we point are out. running out of time very rapidly. We thank you very much for joining us. We beg your indulgence. Uh, we're going to try it one more time next week where we conclude with the third part of our great debate on 9-11 conspiracy theories. Thank you. Thank Actually, you I think and good night. Here's a closer shot. Actually, I think that was a little better than the first one. We still see have the that. plane came in from the right. This is a very debris. special occasion. We've favorite, never Mark, done or three or debates in a row. We think the subject the warrants the three. Where is the evidence of a plane? This is. Yeah. You can see that our uh, debaters still are full of energy. The plane came in from here. Where did the it's debris? And doesn't even support. We're going to try to hose them down and get them get them in shape for the next show. I'm talking about the data and the pilot analysis of the data. You got an independent. Source here. You do not know what you're talking about. You are the one, sir, who does not. They didn't hear the bell. Where did the plane come from? <laughs> Where did the plane come from? It Let's came stop. from we're an egg where all aside, little planes got. Is this, this, yeah, yeah, we can, is this debris? Go is this debris? We're done, right? And it showed up later, man. It is wasn't this, are there. We still on this the is end? before all that. Stage so all the people, stuff was staged. all the people on Route 27. Yeah, yeah, guys all the people on Route 27. Hundreds of people. Could someone tell me if we're still on? Steve Riskus. A friend of mine had a buddy was driving a truck right in front, and he saw the big plane come toward the Pentagon and swerve off his name over it. What's his name? Well, his I'd like to talk is, to him. Uh, Ball, I think. John I'd like to Ball. talk to him. Mark Bright. Try and track him down for the pilot. Mike Walter. Rodney Walsh. Jim. Kirk Milburn.